I started rock climbing in high school and I got progressively more fanatic about it. I used to go to Little Cliffs when I was in college. I was in New Haven, Connecticut. We used to go to the Shawangunks, which is about an hour and a half away. It's kind of the mecca of rock climbing on the East Coast. The idea of even going to the Himalayas was something of these sort of superhuman, hard people that I read about that I certainly didn't consider myself to be that kind of breed. But the thing that kind of changed things was I had this scholarship to go to Oxford University in England for two years. My scholarship paid for 52 weeks of study for two years. So I more or less had 28 weeks of paid climbing holiday for two years. And what was more, Oxford had a bunch of uh, uh, old fellowships that were remnants of the days when Oxford students were supposed to civilize various aspects of the world. And uh, in particular, they had one called the AC Irvine Grant for Oxford students to enjoy a strenuous holiday in mountains abroad. And the more exotic of a locale and the bigger the mountain, the uh, more money they gave you. And that led me to getting invited on you know, several climbs. I got invited to go to the east face of Everest with the first American climbing team in Tibet, which was an amazing learning experience for me. I was sort of all of a sudden sponsored to climb with some of my heroes who I've been reading about since the days uh, I began climbing. And I was in Nepal working as a general doctor and I saw the miracle of eye surgery. This Dutch team came in and did cataracts and this woman just blossomed back to life. It was the most incredible thing I'd ever seen. You know, the village where I was working was just accepted that, you know, you get old, your hair turns white, your eye turns white, and then you die. And people get depressed, they can't, you know, when you think of a, you know, a subsistence, agrarian economy, it's a huge burden having a blind person in the family. But you don't think about it, but worldwide, there are 18 million people who can't see the shadow of a hand move in front of their face. I got so excited. I came back to the States. I trained as an ophthalmologist. And then I was looking for how do I get involved. My whole life I've always enjoyed trying and pushing myself and uh, really trying new things. And it's hard to really throw yourself at something fully if you're not willing to fail. We started out just teaching one doctor at a time to do good cataract surgery. Then we started taking some of the uh, best young cataract surgeons and sending them either to America or Australia for subspecialty fellowships. We started creating primary eye care centers dotted throughout Nepal that would screen for patients, give glasses, treat basic diseases, cure basic infections. And then we would uh, come in and do large volume cataract surgery. When we started, the amount of surgery being done in Nepal was minuscule. There were about 15,000 cataracts in the whole country being done, and most of it was at low quality. And there was an estimated backlog of about 200,000 people, about 40,000 new people going blind per year. And uh, in 2009, the Nepali doctors did over 200,000 cataract surgeries. And things are now so good, but unfortunately I'm not really needed. And so uh, a lot of what I do now is just sort of supervisory and sort of working on teaching the latest, greatest, state-of-the-art advances in corneal surgery. The Himalayan Cataract Project's main focus now is in Africa. And we have active programs in Rwanda, Ghana, and Ethiopia and are working sort of an advisory role and doing work in about five other African countries. If I go, you know, to Africa with Alan Crandall and we're doing 900 cataracts in a day, in a week, and we're working together side by side for 14 hours, I think there's that kind of common brotherhood of, of sharing really intense experiences. And there are lots of people actually in Park City, you know, who kind of share that bond with. A lot of people are willing to put themselves out there and do things uh, in a way uh, a lot of our society is sort of built around risk aversion. We have a lot of people who are willing to go out there and try here in Park City. Park City really gives me a sense of community living here in Utah. I was recruited to come 
and developed the Division of International Ophthalmology at the Moran Eye Center. And Salt Lake's a big city. Even our hospital system at the University of Utah is a big hospital system. The thing that makes Park City what it is, to me, is the people I, I share Park City with. There are so many incredible people and so many just wonderful, kind people, so many people who share my passions in the mountains and uh, so many great things to do. It's just a real joy to be able to work at a great medical center like the University of Utah and a great eye hospital like the Moran Eye Center, yet still be able to live in a great town with a great sense of community.